Well, we have eased into worship this morning with beauty and with a quiet joy. I hope that you might now sing along with us. Uh, it is Joy Sunday here at Epiphany and across the world on this third Sunday in Advent. I hope that you will join us in singing this first song, which I bet you know it is the first Noel.
God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for gathering us here on this day. We pray that as we gather in this space, as we gather in this time, that you might show us the ways in which you are showing up, that we might point to you, that we might not be overwhelmed with fear or sadness or frustration, but that we might see you, that we might see God, Emmanuel, with us through these days, and we might point you out to those who are hurting, and that we might have signs to point to here this day in this worship service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Holy God, we confess 
that we want to have more of you in our lives, yet without the discipline and pain of preparing to receive you. Please forgive us our fear and laziness. Holy God, we confess that we let fear get the best of us, rather than turning our lives over to you. Please forgive our giving into fear and failure to trust in you. Good Christian friends, rejoice. Christ was born to save. God forgives you every sin. What a gift indeed. Amen. Amen. and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. I invite you to share peace with one another, and as you do that, as you share peace across, yeah, yes, as you share peace through the screen, which is always exciting, as you share peace in the comments with one another, as you share peace with those in your household, as you write down on your phone the people you're going to share peace with later in the day, I invite all of the children who are nearby to come on close to the screen. I do want to share with you um, today the actual story from the story Bible that I skipped last week so you can see all the fun pictures, okay? So come on close to the screen so you can see that. All right, let's see. This is about John the Baptist. Oh my goodness, so exciting. John the Baptist. I just have to turn to the right page. John the Baptist, you remember, we talked about as being very strange last week. And um, we didn't get to see his picture. So we're going to look at it today. All right. Here we go. This is called John the Baptist. Yep, that's his picture. That's what the person who drew this thinks John the Baptist looks like. You guys want to see yeah, this is John the Baptist. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? He's very hairy, according to this illustrator. Mm -hmm. Yep, John <laughs> was an unusual man. <laughs> he had lots of hair and a long beard. Yep. His clothes looked like his face. They, too, were furry and hairy. His clothes were made of camel's hair. Mm held together with a leather belt. John ate strange foods, including wild honey and locusts, a kind of grasshopper. Yuck. Ugh. God gave John an important job. His job was to tell people that Jesus was coming and help them get ready to believe what Jesus would teach them. John knew the things Jesus would tell people were the most important things in the world. When he taught people, John stood by the river and yelled out, Hey, all of you, tell God you're sorry for your sins. Turn your life around and act in ways that are good and honest. Then he would turn to another group and shout, Are you listening? This is important. Jesus is coming. 
See, there he is. He, he is, apparently has a really big mouth, too, which is important for crying out. And here are the people. Some look, like, happy, and some are a little confused. Yep. He is the Messiah. He will save all of us. Day after day, John continued teaching, preaching, and crying out so the people would listen. Many people came to hear what John had to say about Jesus. There were rich and poor people, honest and dishonest people, nice and not so nice people. Some people listened to John. Some people didn't. Some people said, that man must be a messenger from God. Some said, he is really odd. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Many people believed the message John told. Those people said, I am sorry for my sins. I want God to forgive me. To each, John said, God does forgive you. He baptized those people in the river. The people started calling him John the Baptist. John the Baptist had done a good job. The people were ready to hear the message Jesus would bring. Huh. That is a man with a very interesting job, don't you think? Yep. Do you have a job? No? Maybe? I'll tell you, you all have a job. Uh, most of you, I'm guessing, have the job of student right now. Yeah. Which is a really weird job to have, just like it's a really weird job to be a teacher. Right? Yeah. It's really weird to be a teacher right now. Yes. But we all have a job, and it's really important. And what's interesting about John's job is that it's actually a job we can all do. It can be all of our jobs. Because what John does is he points to Jesus. He points to where he sees God coming into the world. And we can all do that. And that's especially important because sometimes our jobs these days look really different than they used to look. And we get a little lost sometimes. And we think that the world is so different but I want you to know that even while things seem upside down and not quite right, you have such an important job because God continues to show up. Yep. Um, in my house, um, I think I've told you before, in my house, when we go to bed each night, um, we do highs and lows, like what was good about the day, what was not so good about the day. But my favorite part is our God moment. And sometimes the kids don't always have a God moment, but when we do, they're so interesting because they show us where we see God showing up in the day. And I invite you to look for signs of God yeah, in your, in your daily life. So, for example, my God moment yesterday was a conversation I had with someone where I really felt like God was a part of that conversation. Yeah. And you can see God, too. And not only that, but you, like John, can point to it and can tell others that even if life seems hard and challenging and sad, God is here in the midst of all of that, and God will continue to show you that you are loved. And they're loved, too. Okay? All right. Can we do that? We'll try. All right. I think we should pray, because that's a lot. Okay. Can you all help me pray? Yes. All right. Can you, can you help me pray? All right. Dear God, Dear God. Thank, you for John. thank you for John. Thank you for giving him a job to point to you. Help us to be like John and point to where we see you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Welcome, welcome again to worship today. I do have a few announcements. I'm going to try to work through them. There's a lot because um, while all the world seems to shut down, <laughs> um, we keep working away. We keep um, doing God's work here in this place of the God is Love Church. And I know that many of you are interested to see how we do Christmas Eve this year. So I'm going to particularly point to that um, as a place that God is going to show up. God is going to show up on Christmas Eve. It's going to be different. It's going to be weird. But God's going to show up. And so at 2 p.m. we're going to have um, a parking lot worship service where um, we will uh, invite people to gather in the parking lot here at Epiphany. And um, you'll come to the parking lot and put your offering in the plate and pick up communion on your way in. And then you'll be uh, directed by an usher to where you park. And then you can uh, tune your radio to what our um, to what our number is on the dial. 92.7. What is it? 92.7. We think it's going to be 92.7. Every once in a while it shifts. But we expect it to be 92.7 where you can listen in your car and then you can see with your eyes. Um, me and Uriah and Una will be there and welcoming you and having Christmas Eve together at 2 p.m. in our parking lot singing Christmas carols and sharing in communion that day. Um, and so we hope that you stay warm in your cars while we try not to freeze, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the Holy Spirit's going to keep us warm, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. Woo! <laughs> So for that worship service, we really, really, really need you to RSVP um, because it helps us pre prepare and make sure that we have uh, the spots available in the parking lot to have everyone lined up and able to see. And then at 4 p.m. that day, we will have a, a festival worship service that is like, like today's worship services. So it's recorded and then premiered uh, on Facebook and YouTube. And 5 p.m. will be our family contemporary service. Um, Pastor Arwen will be guiding the kids through the worship service and you're invited to be a part of that. Um, there will be some crafts and some activities and hopefully you'll see even some of the kids of the congregation featured in that um, at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And then because this parking lot worship thing is new to us and we're not quite sure how it's going to go, we're actually going to uh, do one before that. We're going to do one on uh, Sunday, December 20th. Um, oh my goodness, that's next Sunday. Yeah, so next Sunday we're going to do um, our contemporary service at 9 a.m. outside in the parking lot. And we invite you to come to that. Um, it will work the same way where you listen on the radio um, in the warmth of your car. And um, we invite you to come and we invite you to RSVP for that again so we can make sure we have everything lined up for you to be there. And then uh, we will also then have um, our worship services on the 27th, the 9 a.m. contemporary service. This service will be live that day on the 27th um, so that we can have communion. And so we invite you to uh, let us know if you would like to receive a communion delivery, home communion delivery on the 27th um, so that you can uh, take communion with us as we worship that day. Um, we do ask that you go ahead and do that right, like right now. <laughs> so put in the comments that you want communion uh, if you do on the 27th. And then the uh, absolute last day that we can get information on that is the 22nd. But why wait? Just do it today. <laughs> um, you should also know that we are going to have worship on New Year's Eve and on Epiphany Day. So New Year's Eve is a Thursday, the 31st, obviously, at 7 p.m. It will be live from the sanctuary here and um, that will be able to be viewed on Facebook but not on YouTube and uh, we will worship that night and we'll be live together and then on Epiphany Day um, that worship service on that Wednesday will also be at 7 p.m. and also be live from the sanctuary so only on Facebook and we have a guest preacher that day uh, you might have heard of him Bishop Bill Gole will be with us that day so I invite you to join us for worship on Epiphany Day. No wonderful dinner to share, but I promise you next year, whoo, we're gonna go all out. It's gonna be exciting. Um, so for now, we will keep our attention focused on Jesus and the special guests that he gets that day. 
And then uh, finally to say that this is a season of generosity, which we are incredibly grateful for. We have already seen a uh, wonderful outpouring of generosity. Um, one way that you can be generous in this time is through our, Christ our Christmas wish list so that we can decorate um, our worship services so that we can feel festive and like uh, we can worship uh, Christ as we are called to. You're invited to do that, and then you're also invited to consider what good gifts you might use. Um, so, like, instead of giving your uncle that doesn't need anything, um, you know, a, a framed uh, photograph, you can give him, <laughs> you can give him a uh, a vaccination for a child in another country, <laughs> which this year seems particularly important. And so that information was in your tower light. And then we continue to, um, to make deliveries to families. This Thursday, we are delivering so much to these families, um, which we're so grateful for. Uh, the food that we always do, plus a ham um, for Christmas, plus uh, all the Christmas presents for all the children. There are about 50 children amongst these families. Um, and then the hats and scarves and gloves to go along with that through this season. So we thank you so much for your generosity um, through this time that we are able to point um, to point and to cry out that God is love in so many ways. And now we turn our attention to the reading of God's word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the good news of St. John. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah 
nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptized. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Ah. Well, have, um, have any of you watched any horrible movies lately? Yep. Yeah. Um, have you, any of you watched one of those movies that you love and know is awful at the same time? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Um, there's one movie like that that I am desperate to find. It's not available streaming, which is really frustrating. I have the physical copy of it, but it takes so much work to watch one of those these days, right? Um, it's, a, it's what's called a mockumentary, <laughs> and it's called Drop Dead Gorgeous. It's, it's hilarious and awful at the same time. Um, I won't bother you with the plot of it. It's, a, it's just generally a mockumentary about a, um, a beauty pageant. And um, I'll just tell you one little bit of it because I think it's funny. Uh, featured in it is the Lutheran Sisterhood Gun Club. Yep, I just find that entertaining. <laughs> um, the one, uh, the pretty obnoxious villain in the movie played by Denise Richards, um, she wants to be seen as good and charitable, but she doesn't actually want to be good. Do you, do you know what I mean? Are there people like that that you know that like that like don't really want to do the work to be good because that's just way too much, but would like people to think that they are good, would like people to see that they are being good, and so um, this this young woman played by Denise Richards, she goes um, to visit someone who is is not doing well in the hospital, and she goes with the TV crew that's doing the the fake documentary. Um, so that she can be seen visiting this person. And she gets there, and the heroine of the movie is already there. Um, not because of what it looks like, but just because that's where, that's what she does. She's actually a nice person. And so when Denise Richards shows up, the, the woman she's trying to visit says, Who are you? In front of the TV cameras. <laughs> and so then uh, Denise Richards says, Oh, this is just a little game we play. I come in and she says, Who are you? Who are you? (sighs) How often we pretend to be something we are not in order to impress others. Bosses, potential bosses, potential love interests, friends, neighbors. Sometimes we even pretend to ourselves something that we are not. But really, what a question to be thrown at you. Do you ever get that question? Who are you? That is what John has asked this morning. Not just once, but multiple times, over and over again. You heard Darian say, who are you? And you know, he never really answers to their satisfaction. Who are you? He says, well, I'm not the Messiah, in case you're wondering. And I dare not claim such a thing. What then? Are you Elijah, sent to proclaim God's promised Messiah from the clouds? Well, he's not coming from the clouds. He is not Elijah returned. Nope, not him. Are you the prophet? Which always seems like an odd question, but by the prophet they mean a prophet that has been foretold like Moses. Nope, not him either. Well then, who are you? And the answer he gives is a strange one. It's not, it's not I'm a carpenter or a fisherman. It's not his vocation that he gives. Nor is it I am the son of so-and-so. Like so much of the begets that we get in the Old Testament. No, instead he quotes the prophet Isaiah. He actually quotes the passage we heard last week, if you remember that. He says, it's not so much an identity 
as a job description when he says, I am, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. In other words, my job is to point to someone else. Oh, and, and I'm someone who baptizes. And by the way, the person that I keep pointing to, he's the real deal. And that's a whole new kind of baptism he brings. Who are you, John the Baptist? Well, I am what I do. But Jesus, now that's someone who's really going to do something. As we heard today in the prophet Isaiah, this Jesus who comes is going to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. You might want to know who I am, but that's the one you should be asking about. His job description, his to-do list, his job title is way more interesting than mine. How much of your identity is tied up in what you do? <laughs> in your job description, or for some of us, your multiple job titles. How much of who you are is a teacher, or an auto mechanic, or a receptionist, or an accountant, or, or a nurse, or a real estate agent? Or perhaps more broadly, the sense of who you are is tied up in, in, in a broader sense, that you are someone who takes care of people. Or you're someone who makes people feel welcome and part of something. Maybe you are someone who identifies yourself as a mentor for others. Maybe you're someone who is identified as a person who feeds people. I know there are people around here like that who are desperately missing their main vocation, providing food to those who are hungry. Not just for sustenance, but are hungry for community. How much of your identity has been thrown out the window in these nine months? Because you can't do the things that are central to who you are. How much of your identity is wrapped up in relationships with people you can't even see right now? Well, the beauty of John the Baptist is that his identity is wrapped up in who God is. His main identity, purpose, role, task is to point to Jesus, who is God incarnate, God in flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. And you might think, well, that's all well and good for John, good for him, that he can get on with his main job in life. But what about me? I ain't no John the Baptist <laughs> with camel's hair and eating locust. Well, no. But we, too, are called to the task of pointing to God. And by the way, that is something we can do just as well today as we did a year ago. Seems astonishing, I know. One thing has not changed. We can point to God. No virus can stop us from seeing and pointing to God at work in this world. And no vaccine will suddenly enable us to do that better than we can right now. Who are you? Who are you really? May your identity be tied to God's identity. May your identity today and always be child of God, body of Christ, light of the world. May you, may who you are, be grounded in whose you are. And may we always
see signs of God at work in the world. Anytime we see where the oppressed have received good news, where the brokenhearted are healed, where captives are released, where those in prison get a fresh start. Then, when we can see God in such ways, every day is meaningful, hard, painful, sad, frustrating, sure, but meaningful because God is among us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now I invite you to join me in reading responsibly this creed, this creed that speaks to a God who continues to be active in this world. We are not alone. We, we live, live in God's, God's world. world. We believe in God, who, who has created and, and is creating, created. who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We, we are, are not alone. alone. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And as we sing again this song that we sang last week, oh, it was so moving, I had never heard of it, but it's beautiful, Ready the Way. As we sing this song, I invite you to consider what job God has given you in God's kingdom. And what are the resources that you have to share with the mission that we have here at the God is Love Church? In particular, I want to invite you, um, I want to, invite you to consider um, what your gift should look like in the coming year. Today, I have witnessed two people come to church, one with their offering to make up for the rest of the year um, that they hadn't sent in the offerings, and another person who simply wanted to know where they were in relation to their pledge, which I was just so moved by, so incredibly moved by their generosity and their belief in the mission that we share. Uh, I invite you to go ahead and do that if that's something that you need to do to, um, to be generous in what, with what God has given you. I also invite you into something that we would have normally done back in November, which is to make a pledge for the coming year. Um, we did not have a consecration Sunday. We did not have a consecration luncheon over in Heitman Hall because it's not possible right now. Um, but if, if making a pledge is part of what God is calling you into in this season, I invite you to go ahead and do that. The information is on the screen for, um, for Kurt Ketter, the person that you can send uh, by email or call with your pledge for 2021. Um, I just spoke with my husband this week, and we have um, we have figured out our our um, our funds for the coming year, and so I'm going to be increasing my pledge by twenty dollars each week uh, for 2021. And I invite you as well to consider uh, where God is calling you um, with what you have and with what God has given you. And now, uh, as you consider that, and as you make your donation at god is loveorg donate or as you put your check to mail. Uh, uh, to church at 4301 Rasp Avenue. As you do that, might you join us in singing Ready the Way.
God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the gifts that you have given us, for the task that you have given us to ready the way for your son. We give you thanks for the ways in which we can point to you. We ask that the gifts we offer this day might be a might be a way in which this church points to God who is love, that we might point to you and to what you are doing in this world for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, I invite you to join us today at noon for a time of community. It is a good time to catch up with one another, um, to hear the ways in which we are seeing God appear in our lives. Um, I feel like I get to hear a lot more of that than many of you do, because I get to talk to so many of you individually. But it's just such a beautiful thing when you can share those sightings of God together, or the ways in which you're struggling and trying to find where God is acting in your life, I invite you to come and be a part of that, that we might support one another. And now may God be with you as you keep watch for the Christ whose advent is promised. May God embolden your witness to Christ's coming and so prepare his way. May God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
in peace tell the good news that God is love. In word and deed, thanks be to God.